Hello everybody, my name is Bald Omniman. If you're new to the channel or you're clicking on this video from the algorithm, enjoy the relaxing Capcom tunes. This is from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Today we're going to be talking about what I think are the best and worst ways to progressively overload. If you're coming to the channel from one of my goofier videos like the Jack and Stack Gangsta Rap video or I sent my wife this video and it's just me working out shirtless. I like making goofy videos like that, but I'm really big on self-coaching and education. I want you to be able to interpret training and have long-term training success without feeling the need to take out your wallet and pay for something. To answer what a lot of times is a very simple question that you have that can instantaneously increase the quality of your training. Progressive overload is something that confuses a lot of people just because it's not as simple as just add weight to the bar a lot of the times. There's other ways to progressively overload. Some are better than others. I had a little fun with the way that we're going to tier these. So it starts with S, stacked. You can read the rest. Ends with decrepit. Decrepit is the worst. Now in terms of how we are going to grade these, there is a criteria for that as well. Effectiveness, ease of use, scalability, and then drawbacks that the particular method has. We're going to start with what is the most important means of progressively overloading in terms of scalability, in terms of ease of use, in terms of effectiveness, and in terms of drawbacks. It's the best, in my opinion, even better than just adding load to the bar. And for the Oonga Boonga people that are like, oh, well, adding weight to the bar is the most important thing. It has to be paired with this. And this vacuum cleaner dude is meant to represent improving your rep quality. If you're increasing load at the expense of making your reps look terrible, or you're skipping your eccentrics, or you're not pausing on the chest, or you're cutting depth more and more and more on your squats, or you're bouncing your deadlifts, you're adding weight for no reason. You're hustling in reverse, as I like to say it. It's super effective. It's very simple to just pause on the chest and make sure that you're hitting depth on squats. Scalability, you will always be able to make your reps more undeniable as Joey Flex, a famous powerlifting coach, likes to say. You can always be more undeniable with your depth on squats. You can always make sure that your pauses are more solid. There's no drawback to increasing your rep quality. Now, of course, you got to put more weight on the bar. Now. That's not the only way to progressively overload, but your end result with weight training is going to be add weight to the bar. The only drawback to just adding weight to the bar is that you can't do it linearly. That's not really a drawback if you employ these other strategies. So scalability, you can scale weight ad nauseum. You can always add more weight. Now, in terms of ease of use, it's also very unga bunga to just slide a plate on the bar. And then effectiveness, it's instantaneously effective to put more weight on the bar. It's gonna allow you to demonstrate strength. It's gonna allow you to continue to progress your training in the right direction. You need to add load to the bar at some point, even if you're a bodybuilder or someone more hypertrophy focused. Now, next is another really, really good one strange that we have a lot of s tiers in a row we're gonna get into a stinker in a second i think because i don't want to you know have all the big guns coming out right away a really effective means of progressive overload is just adding more reps in a set right so you keep your weight the same and then you add more reps to each set there's a lot of different systems that employ this the rep goal system evolving rep ranges they all employ adding more volume now, another effective means of adding more volume is just doing more sets as well. So going from three sets to five sets at the same weight is going to be another way of progressively overload. Now, we said we're going to talk about a stinker. Let's go ahead and get in that stinker. This is the, uh, the pencil neck. Now, what this represents is what I believe to be uh, a well-meaning way of going about getting stronger but ultimately if your absolute strength isn't going up this is pointless and that's increasing your pound for pound strength or trying to be as strong as you can be at a low body weight at the expense of 
increasing your absolute strength. Now, far be it for me to say if you weigh like 130 pounds and you bench press 365, that's not immensely impressive. But if you're saying that you're stronger than someone that benches 365 because you bench twice your body weight at 130 pounds and they only bench 1.5 times their body weight, you're missing the forest for the trees in my opinion. So pencil necks uh, use that means of making themselves feel better about being weak, in my opinion. If you disagree with that, let me know in the comments down below. If you're a pound for pound strength enjoyer, let me know down below. Now, another way to progressively overload that I think isn't quite S tier, but is more brolic tier, is to just rest less. This is increasing the density of your work. I would use this if, you know, I'm already improving my rep quality, I'm not ready to add weight yet, and I've already done these two things. These are foundational. This is more something that you would do when these aren't progressing in the way that you might like. Increasing work density is going to increase your work capacity and work capacity basically just amounts to you being able to do more work and more volume over time. If you can do more work, in theory, you can do more volume. Now, resting more, I'm not going to put it above resting less because they do different things. Now, if you rest more, that's going to allow your body to recuperate more between sets and allow you to demonstrate more strength. This is good to a point. If you're getting to the point where like you're resting 10, 12, 15 minutes per set, uh, you need to address your work capacity and start resting a little bit less. But up to like five, six minutes on your really heavy like deadlifts, for example, that's going to be a good way of allowing you to push more total load, more total reps and induce that progressive overload that you're looking for. Now, frequency is a really good one. I'm gonna put it in Adonis tier. So if you increase your frequency, the amount of times that you do an exercise per week, that's gonna allow you to get better at the movement. It's gonna allow you to naturally increase your volume, do more reps, and then over time, start to do things like you have like a light, medium, and heavy day. That's going to get more into like the periodization style of things, but increasing your frequency is a good way to do all of these on their own separate days. You know what I'm saying? So you could have a day where, you know, you, you've, you're, you're doing more reps. So like 12 rep sets and then another day where you're progressing in terms of the amount of sets that you're doing. Frequency is a very powerful tool. Make sure you're using it. Now, progressive overload in terms of the range of motion that you're doing is excellent as well. Now, at a minimum, you should be using a standardized range of motion. So for squats, that's somewhere thereabouts parallel. Below parallel is awesome, ATG is even better. You better be touching your be your chest on bench press and you, you better be uh, doing some form of hip hinge from the floor for full range of motion on the hamstrings and the lower back. Where extended range of motion comes into play is when you start to do things that go past that standard range of motion. So like dumbbell bench press, really good. Um, ATG squats, very, very good. Deficit deadlifts, deficit stiff leg deadlifts. All those things are a good way of increasing the range of motion and thus the amount of total work that you're doing. I don't know the science, guys. I hate it school. But what I know is, or what I think is, and some... Uh, Gigabrain can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but work is weight times distance times the speed, I think. Something like that. If you're moving the same load, more distance, you're doing more work, and that's going to be a good way of inducing progressive overload. This pairs very well with frequency in that you could have one day where you're doing like a standard range of motion lift and then another day where you're doing an extended range of motion lift. This is the Dead Rising mall music, I think. Let me know down below if y'all have played Dead Rising before. I'm a big Capcom uh, fan, enjoyer. I'm not no fan of nothing. Um, let's talk about another really good one that is probably something that y'all need to hear. I got the clucking bell icon here, and that's meant to represent eating more calories. If you are not eating enough, 
to support quality training, and that means eating in a surplus, whether that's 200 calories, 300 calories, giggle bulking, whatever you want to do, none of this is going to work. So more range of motion, more frequency, more weight. You're not going to be able to do any of that if you're not eating enough to support your training. I don't care how much you think you're eating. If you are not actively gaining weight, like weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, you are not in a calorie surplus and you need to eat more. Um, that's really the most important thing, guys. Like, honestly, this has to go in front of rep quality, in my opinion. Like, because if you don't, if you don't eat enough, none of this is going to matter. Now, another really underrated one, I think, is it kind of comes into play with cleaning up your rep quality. And that's to lift a little bit slower with your eccentrics. I'm going to put it in A tier. Now, I got the Dr. Mike Israetel picture there because he's really famous for making people do really slow, stiff leg deadlifts um, to increase their deadlifting strength and get their hamstrings and lower back jacked and stacked and juicy. I think that that's something that you can always employ, and this comes into play with frequency as well. So, as I said, you could have one day where it's like a standard variation and then one day where it's a slower variation. Lifting faster, like lifting the same weight faster uh not quite as good even though it looks a lot cooler like if you can just manhandle a weight that you grinded a few weeks ago that's a good way of progressively overloading without necessarily adding more weight and again comes into play with frequency one day standard one day like explosive um but i don't find that i would use it before i would use any of these above it it's not decrepit tier, it's not, you know, pencil neck tier, but it's not quite as useful as these other ones. And it's not necessarily the most scalable in that, like, unless you're measuring your velocity, it's hard to tell the difference between if you move something at like 12 meters per second versus if you moved it at 14 meters per second. Some people really like it, like Mike T. I'm not going to butcher his last name, but if you... Uh, search him on Instagram. He's one of the best powerlifting coaches in the world. He's a really big fan of measuring velocity, you know, bar speed. It can work, but in my experience for the average guy just trying to get jacked and stacked, it's not necessary in my opinion. Now we're down to the last few. So we're going to go with the slacking picture, getting in less work and more time. This just comes into play with, you know, resting more. Um, if you decrease the density of your training and that like you're resting more overall, that's a good way of progressively overloading, but it does have its limits because at a point in time, your work capacity is going to get so bad if you're not making sure that you're keeping it at a good rate that you're going to hit a brick wall with this, in my opinion. Same thing with getting in uh, more work in less time. Now we're down to the last two. C.T. Ali Fletcher. OG, I command you to grow, lifting flaming dumbbells. Force reps. Force reps are really good for hypertrophy. Now, I'm not going to put them on the same level as just lifting slower or increasing your frequency but it is an underrated means of progressively overloading. So there's something in strength and conditioning called a mechanical drop set. And what that basically means is that you do as many reps with like strict form, and then you change your body mechanics in such a way that you can get more reps, but you're in an easier mechanical position. That's what force reps are all about. So it could just be as easy as something as, you know, you're doing tricep extensions, you reach mechanical failure, you know, standing a good distance away from it, and then you stand a little bit closer to it, which makes it easier, and then you bang out some more reps. Um, rows, cheat rows, cheat, cheat reps are our last means of this. That's a good means of progressive overload after you've already exhausted, you know, strict reps. So Dr. Mike uh, is a big fan of all strict reps. I do feel that cheat reps and force reps have their place as well. Um, just for the means of, you can do a number of strict reps, 
and still have enough energy to be able to stimulate the muscle in some capacity. I don't think that you should do all cheat reps or all forced reps, but you should have specific exercises where you are using them. So back exercises are very intuitive for these two in particular. That's the list, y'all. Short and sweet. This will be fully timestamped still. Let me know uh, where you agree, where you disagree. And let me know what your favorite Capcom game is down below. I think mine personally would be Marvel vs. Capcom 2. One last thing that I want to leave you with before I let you go. Now that you've watched this video, I want you to uh, click in the description of this video and watch my Berserk Method self-coaching video. It's fully timestamped. It covers a variety of topics that are going to allow you to coach yourself uh, for long-term training success. It's one of my best videos, if not my best video, and the one that I'm most proud of. It covers a variety of topics from progressive overload to exercise selection to like the mindset aspect of things there's a lot that goes into coaching yourself that video covers almost all of it and it's completely free guys if you like this video please like it i'll see y'all later